Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Between a Pot and a Hard Place. I'm Stephen Colton. And I'm Chris Kirkpatrick. And I'm still working out my camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like huh. I need to find a better way to mount it. Like I mentioned before, like the clip or mount or whatever is so heavy, I can't mount it on my screen. So I move it. It like I got to find the right spot. And then the light's still kind of shining through. It's weird that it's still daylight <clears throat> here. It's 8.30 at night, and it's or here it is, and then it's still daylight. So, like, the really? sun's coming through the window. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, like, I, like, try to use the blanket to cover the window so the light comes down, but then it, it's still there. <laughs> well, I, the, the picture looks good from where I see it, so. That's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so used to it being dark at this point. Summer uh, time... Is I love summertime though. I mean, not sum summertime in general, but in the actual time during the summer because I like the fact that it's like almost nine o'clock at night before it gets really dark. Um, right. I, don't know. I like the longer. I like the longer day too. I I'm not a fan of the heat. And, yeah, the uh, heat. Well, I can't complain about heat because I haven't really seen heat yet because you kind of right. have more a lot more heat than I do. It's kind of chilly here, probably in comparison to. Yeah, we've been oh, we've been over we've been over a hundred a couple of days here already Oof. this week, and uh, what? Here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, with us doing all of our graduations outdoors, um, it just sucks. So. Yeah, and here it's like I'm I'm thinking like eighty three is bad, but it, it seems like I need a jacket. I mean, I did want to share something like. Before yeah. we go into, uh, I have to move my camera a minute so I can see the screen. I have it like right over where I need to see everything. Um, I'm in this like Facebook group. It's it's a kind of a group. It's an art fan art group, but based out of um, all of Kevin Smith's film films and characters. Yeah. So, and this one guy is he's an awesome artist. Um, he draws uh, different people and different as different other characters. And I just wanted to share one thing because I got drawn as a zombie. A lot of us were drawn <laughs> as zombies. And um, he told me that he was going to have a lot of fun uh, destroying me because these zombies are, some of them are beaten. Some of them are just normal, but zombified. And here's, uh, I'm going to show the screen of what I look like as a zombie. Um, I just wanted to share that for people because I thought it was really cool. Um, I don't know if he's on Twitter, but... I don't know if you've seen this show before, but his name is Chris McDonald, and he does all kinds of art, and he's actually talked. Um, Kevin Smith is actually, he's like, look, dude, you need to design a t-shirt for us. So the guy's pretty cool. He's, he's yeah. a great artist, and tons of stuff like that that he's drawn. He, he's drawn like the, the, the clerk's characters as other characters, or these other characters as other characters. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's completely unrelated to anything we normally talk about, but. I thought no, it was that, cool. I think that's really cool. It, it's original. It's, um, you know, and, and certainly the guy's just got a, a lot of creativity in it. Yeah, definitely. And he's, I don't know. I mean, he, he seems like, you know, it's, um, I suck. I'm not that great. I'm like, dude, no. Like, if I tried to do that, like, I could probably do it. But he just pumps it out left and right. I mean, he, he does commission pieces as well. People say, hey, uh, you know, I want to get you to draw this thing for me. And he's like, okay, well, here's my price for this. And I mean, if you've got a talent like that and you can do it, like do it because I wish I could, like I said, I could draw, but I couldn't pump it out like that. Right. And it's all hand done uh, with pencil and, you know, I think just pencils. He may use yeah. markers to color, but I mean, it's awesome art. I mean, Really, really cool to see like what he puts out every every week or two weeks or however often it, it is. It's always fun to just check in on that. I'm like, oh, look, there's me as a zombie. I'm and I'm like more destroyed than everybody. I was like, geez. <laughs> there wasn't much of you left. Not at all. Yeah, you're one of those zombies <laughs> that you're just kind of like worming your way. You, you have one leg and no arms. I'm just like so, vibrating across the floor, right? Or whatever. Right. And now time for Batman jokes. No. No more of those. Uh, no um, more of those. I lost the book. I don't know where I put it, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's I, a sign. Somebody, somebody uh, stole it from you. To burn it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was that was pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it was it was so bad it was good, but then I was like, okay, well, after a couple of times, it was. I realized like it's not going to get any good. Right. It's not going to be funny at all. It's not going to be. Well, I don't know. I got to go back and ah. 
I thought I was prepared because I mentioned we were talking right before we came on about Superman and Lois, and I had the like synopsis for the episode copied, but then I copied the link to send to you to join in the broadcast, and I no longer you, had the link to that. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm just going to pull it up again real quick if I can yeah. find it. Well, you know, but, before we before we jump into Superman and Lois, which I think is going to be the the main topic of our conversation here tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit personal. This has probably been for me one of the most stressful, exhausting, um, you know, weeks I've had in years, and it's just been it's been rough. Um, you know, for for every teacher in the in the country dealing with you know, trying to teach their students virtually. And, and for me, being both a teacher as well as an administrator during that time, it's been really exhausting. And um, I'm not the first person who has felt like uh, I've been holding on for dear life, just <laughs> trying to get through to the end. And, um, you know, Monday is my official last day of the year, but this last Thursday was our graduation. And um, was sort of like the moment where finally we could celebrate all the work these kids have done. And um, so we had a, a drive a drive through graduation. But you know what happens when it comes to things like um, graduations? Anything that can happen will happen. Yeah. And that was and that was Thursday. Uh, we had been planning our graduation for months and uh, three hours before we were ready to, to start our power went out completely. Oh no. How do you do how do you do a graduation without power? You can't run the microphones uh, and do sound checks, you can't scream. play music. You got to scream really loud. We, I mean we we did everything we could. Um, we had a, a backup generator which we fired up, but that didn't work very well and so uh, my executive director pulled his car over and he had an adapter on his car and so oh, he was wow. trying to run the program off his car <laughs> and then the thing you don't think about is when it's hot um, balloons don't do well in the heat they do and not so we had spent all this money on these balloon arches and everything else and in the heat literally every every couple of seconds you just hear balloons popping oh, it was no. like we were hosting a drive-by graduation um, <laughs> and so there we were you know and we were we were still printing uh, programs before uh, the power went out, and so how do we how do we finish even getting ready for our graduation? And it was just it was just really stressful. Um, finally, the the power came on about forty five minutes before we were supposed to start, and that was the the uh, mad dash scramble to pull everything together, but. We got it all ready to go, right in time for the kids to drive on campus um, and to be celebrated. And you know what? To our credit, they wouldn't have known that anything was wrong. Oh wow! But by the end of the night, when we were, when it was all over um, and everything was cleaned up at about nine o'clock that night, um, it was one of those times when I like stumbled in the door of my house <laughs> and uh, just about like just fell face forward <laughs> onto the floor. Um, Yep. Proud moment, hard yeah. work moment, but I am I'm still I think recovering from all that. That's it's quite the uh, quite the week. Uh, I had had nothing like that. Um, no, I'm not saying like ah ha ha. My life was stress free. I mean, tons of stress in other ways, but nothing right. Right. crazy like that. No kind of like almost like a it's almost like a plot of a movie or something like. It's like somebody sabotaged it. It's like they cut the power and it, ha ha ha. We're gonna ruin <laughs> this and like that one guy or one kid that didn't want to graduate. It's like I'll never leave this place. Ha ha. You watch, right? And then they're delaying the graduation. That'd be I'd watch that movie. Um, well, yeah, it, was it, more of, it was more of a of a horror show though. Uh, it was hmm. it was just one of those one of those things where like um, you're embarrassed and you're frustrated and. Everything yeah. you do just doesn't work. So, I think we've, I think I've definitely had days like that. I mean, yeah, luckily not recently. Well, I mean, kind of, I mean, not, not in the same like literal way that all at once in one day, but over the course of the last month, 
I probably had like 32 different jobs that I never got to start. Oh, I mean, for different reasons. I mean, the original job I was at, um, when we were talking so much about Northwood Pie and all this stuff, that didn't kind of work out. I think I didn't really mention too much of it on the show, but like stress, anxiety, things like this got to me in like yeah. one. So I was just like, you know what? When there's a customer in front of me, literally like cussing me out and like telling me I'm stupid and you're too dumb to know how to do it. I just, you know, at that point I was like, I'm done. I took off the name badge, threw it over my shoulder, stormed out the door and I was done. And then like a week later I was like, I really shouldn't have done that. I want to go back now. <laughs> but it was, I mean, it wasn't too late because they were like, okay, well that was bad, but I mean, we will give you another shot. Uh, but the kid, and then I was like, okay, cool. He's like, I'll call you back in a little bit and let you know when you can come in. Awesome. And then like, I was, I was in the middle of cleaning my car out. It was like 1230 or 1245 in the afternoon. And he calls me up and says, okay, if you can be here by like two, you can come. I'm like, I literally can't stop and go to, to, to do that. I had, you know, maybe I wasn't cleaning my car. I don't remember what I was doing. I cleaned it that day, but I was doing something and like, I literally couldn't get there in, in less than two hours notice. It was like, that's not fair. I felt like I was set up, like not set up like, ha ha, we're going to get him. But you know, they were like, okay, we might not want him here anymore. And, and I can understand why. I mean, someone storms out like that, no matter the issue, like I, I would understand not wanting that person back, but it's like, okay, you can come back, but we're going to set the situation up to be so impossible that you won't. And it's going to make you look even worse for not showing up. And then same with, as I got a second chance, they said, okay, you can come back. You can work say Monday or uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, this, this, and this. It's like, all right. I'm thinking to myself, cool. But then I finished reading that message and it's, if you respond by the end of the day, problem is it was sent out at like five or 6 PM. Didn't see it. Oh, right wow. Away. I didn't see it right away. And then the guy, he goes to bed at like nine cause he has to be at work at five in the morning every day. And I didn't see it. So I responded the next day and never got a response back. And it was just, one thing after another with that place. And then ugh, it's, it's, I mean, whatever, but you know, luckily that job paid me so well that I had the money to be able to stay home for the last three, four weeks Yeah, and not do anything. It's been nice. But after the second week, I was just like, um, are the lights getting turned off today or no? <laughs> I've paid the bills, but like, it's that feeling of like, I'm, not gonna survive this like month off but you know you always come back and you always you know get back on track and things like that but it's given me a lot of time to to uh read over my script do all these little things that i probably wouldn't have done otherwise and i did discover a new it's not an indie movie it's a it was a major movie i think it starred um, two main two main casts bill Hader and Kristen wig it was okay. a skeleton twins i'm not sure if you've ever seen that movie i haven't but I, uh, a friend of mine, I gave him a shout out last week on the show with Lee, uh, Nick Fellinger, who was also, he's he's been in a couple of Kevin Smith films in the early Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Jay and Silent Bob almost beat him up for saying bad things about Morris Day. And so fun little character. And then anyway, I'm friends with him on Facebook and he's been reading my script and giving me notes and things. And I was supposed to talk to him yesterday. We were going to have like a Zoom call and talk about it but it got away from me and that didn't happen so hopefully tonight or, or another day soon but he told me about a film to watch as homework i was like homework okay this is probably gonna suck because anytime somebody <laughs> tells you watch a movie for homework yeah, right it's like study the character development of this really boring movie where they sit and watch paint dry the entire time it, and then i watched it and i loved it they had its his point was um you know Jay and Todd had was like, you know, put more comedy, maybe not like a forced comedy, but put a little bit more natural humor in these really sad scenes to kind of make them feel more fluid and natural. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I never thought about that that way. And then, you know, Nick says, oh, okay, I've, I've read it. And I think maybe the funeral scene maybe shouldn't be like a comedy fest, but instead of just trying to force jokes or like actually write comedic lines, ha have characters maybe not really say what they're trying to say or not say what's on their mind. And it creates that awkwardness, which can then be funny. So I was like, okay, that's that's making more sense. And he's like, watch this movie. And I watch it. And, you know, Kristen Way again. And um, what did I say? Oh, Bill Hader. Um, I always get those two mixed up. Bill, Bill Hader. Who was the guy from Napoleon Dynamite? What was his name? Um, hey, something Hader, right? Yeah. 
like Jeff Hader or something like that. Or not Jeff, but I, I forget his name. It's not the Napoleon Dynamite kid. It's the other guy. But I always get those guys mixed up because their names are similar. Their last names. Anyway, the movie's pretty good. They're, it's like a brother-sister kind of set up where they haven't talked in 10 years. And as the movie opens, it's kind of it's kind of like serious and it's kind of sad and like really depressing, but there's all this wonderful stuff in it. And basically, you know, the movie opens up with both of them each trying to kill themselves because they're just so depressed. They're like, I can't, you know, and then they both, uh, well, he fails and then she gets a call and goes to see him at the hospital. They haven't spoken in 10 years. And then the rest of the movie is like them kind of reconnecting and like all this stuff is happening. It's a really good movie. I found it. Um, I, I had to dig deep to find this one for free. There, I can't remember where I found it, but it is only like a four dollar rental fee or whatever. For I think it's on YouTube uh, with uh, Google Play Movies or whatever it is on Apple okay. TV. I think it's all over. Um, I didn't want to. My thing was like, if I want to spend any money, I want to buy it. I'd rather spend ten or fifteen dollars on a movie and not having not having seen it before to own it. Than to pay like four dollars to rent it. I don't know. It's right. weird, right. but it was good. It was a really good movie. And when I finished watching it, I was like, I totally see why you suggested this movie because it, it has the tone and the feel of what I'm trying to shoot for, but they do it so much better. <laughs> I mean, it is. I mean, it's those two and Kristen Wiig. She plays it. She's really versatile as far as like what kind of characters she can play. She can play like the southern. Um, kind of character she can play like the criminal kind of character she can play a sweet character a depressed character she's really good all around um a lot of people don't like her but i mean i don't see why not but hey but you can't not everybody's gonna like everything but i think it was a really really good movie and it kind of kind of said all the things that i was trying to say with my movie i was like that's exactly what i'm doing they do a lot of visual like visual symbolism where you don't really quite get why this is like being shown so much until you know the end and it's like oh got it really good movie when i and then the title i was like skeleton twins i don't understand but then i i got it once i saw it i was like oh that makes sense it's a cute name it's i mean not cute but i mean it, it fits um i don't have anything prepared to like show for that like the poster or anything like that but because i just kind of thought of that out of nowhere yeah but it's a good movie I, i'm trying to watch a new movie and it's a it's a 2014 movie, so I had n- I'd never heard of it, and I was surprised because it wasn't indie. And there's another indie film that popped up. I think I maybe told you about it. They posted in this Kevin Smith group that I that I started, and they they periodically post this link to this movie, and I feel like a jerk because I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> but it's his movie uh, that he either was involved in, wrote, directed something. Um, and he keeps sharing it every, every now and then. And I was like, you know, this is because I tell people, like, this group, I'm not, it doesn't have to be about just Kevin Smith. It could be anything about film or podcasting or whatever. Right. Because, like, he was heavily and still is heavily involved in both of those worlds. And one day I'm going to watch that movie and talk about it on here because I think I would like to cover, like, an indie movie maybe once a month. I think that'd be a fun little thing to do. Yeah. Well, and I, and I feel like that really kind of fits our our mold as the podcast and we are mm-hmm. we are very indie in how we are set up too so yeah i mean even after over a year year and a half uh total i, I still feel like oh man this is like this should be better quality or that should be better quality but i'm like well i mean it, i like the way it is i don't want it to be i don't want to look exactly and sound exactly like every other podcast or every other video show or whatever yeah because then it's like it doesn't really stick out and sometimes it takes longer to get up there doing it this way, but you kind of keep, you kind of like keep like to your, not to keep to yourself. That sounds like you're running away, but like you kind of <laughs> stay true to yourself. Like, you know what I mean? That you keep that feeling of like, this is what we did and we're not changing into what everybody expects it to be. Right. I think that what our strength has always been is that we, we were friends before the podcast. We talked about uh, superheroes and TV shows yeah. and, pop culture stuff, you know, long mm-hmm. before the podcast came around, all we simply did was adapt that to this format. Yeah. And I think that's really the strength of it is it's real. I think that's, the, I think that's why a lot of things are, why they're a lot, a lot of them are successful because they, they don't just, 
you don't just get like a guy like a like the, usually with podcasts i've noticed it's like one f- really famous person and three maybe two or three kind of almost famous people right or one kind of almost famous person and a bunch of their buddies that no one has ever heard of or whatever but you get two real people and talking about real things right two people and, that nobody's ever heard of yeah that's a formula for success right there and that's i i like watching shows about not about people no one's heard of but featuring people no one's heard of because it's i feel like that's going to be the realest conversations about things i mean i could look at like a kevin smith podcast and he would sit and talk about i don't know batman for an hour he's probably a bigger batman fan than most people having written batman and having you know been best friends with batman Ben Affleck. Um, he actually lives in Ben Affleck's old house that he bought from him like 20 <laughs> years ago or something. But I'm just That's saying, like, even somebody like that, like, I would trust their opinion of like, this is good. Okay, I believe you. But even people that no one knows, it's like you're gonna. I, I pay more attention to those people just because I see myself in them. It's like I would want to hear what my, what my own opinion about something was, so you can relate to these other people. And I think maybe that's why some. It just fascinates me how some stuff gets so many views and so much attention and some stuff doesn't. Right. I mean, I think my uncle does these little short videos with action figure collections. And then I forget exactly what it was, but this one he just posted like two weeks ago has over 10,000 views on YouTube. Oh, my gosh. And I'm just like – and it's basically – normally it's just like, hello, everyone. This is my Wolverine figure, and this is my Spider-Man figure. They they are friends. And stuff like that. Like, And it's amazing what certain people – you know, it was actually a shark toy, some kind of shark toy or something, like some random thing. It's just amazing. And people like that, like him, like us, who just post content about whatever and no one knows us, sometimes it hits really huge and sometimes yeah. no one looks at it. And it's I love that because you never know what you're going to get out of this. And so it's cool. Like It's almost like um, looking at Facebook the other day uh, when Corey posted about you know the metal detectors and stuff. It almost feels like finding something in the sand, like when you yeah. do an episode, because you're like, today we're going to find a golden ring. And then, like we do every time Lee Newton comes on, um, we always find some gold or something with her. Um, and sometimes if I don't shut up about movies that no one has ever heard of, then we don't find anything but about bottle caps. And so, Right. Well, and I, and I think that is – I think that being the organic nature of things is – it's 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 fun to see what comes out. I mean, I think that is the yeah. that is the real gold of the show. You know, neither of us are really working off of a script, and and though we have our topics that we mm-hmm. want to bring up, um, you know, it's it's just very natural. And I think that there is something endearing about that. You know, you see a lot of oh, other yeah. other shows that are heavily scripted, and uh, you know, you can turn on the news and watch that, but. Mm-hmm. To have people kind of just give their honest opinions and, and viewpoints on things, I think that's I think that's special, and uh, it certainly is a lot more fun. Oh, it is. That way. There's a few podcasts that I like that are like this, that are just like, "Hey, what's going on?" And like, "Oh, nothing," and like they just kind of go. I mean, I know I've mentioned it on here before, but the Tell Them Steve Dave podcast, which is a lot of Kevin Smith's friends who have gone on and made a name for themselves just in podcasting alone. Um. And of that group, one of them is uh, Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers, um, who is a big name on his own. He doesn't have to do this little thing, but he does it because they're all friends. They've been friends for 20, 30 years. And they just sit around and talk. Yeah. I think the last episode, that I, the latest episode, they were talking. There was a whole conversation, maybe 30 minutes of how Brian Quinn thought it would be awesome if he saw a younger person from this generation, say in their 20s or younger, having a poison tattoo of the band poison he's like that would be so awesome it'd be so badass and they're like are you serious that would be awesome and it was like a whole conversation just about that right that's why i love stuff like that because no matter what it is it's fun to listen to and then there's other shows that are heavily like planned detailed that are still interesting like I, i'm a huge fan of the office the tv show the, the american tv show the british tv show is good too but the american show and the podcast is the office ladies it's you know two of the women who were on the show who do this rewatch podcast where each week they talk about an episode of the office and then get little little random facts that no one knows or what and it, it's interesting because i'm such a fan of the show but at the same time it's very heavily not scripted but 
to have like probably a sheet of paper, like talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. And it's so, it is, it sounds great and it, right. and it flows awesome, but <clears throat> it's so heavily focused on being organized and to the point and <clears throat> like locked into a specific time frame and this and that, <clears throat> which is good. It works, but I, I like basically we're just, we can kind of keep going in circles saying the same thing. Basically, the free form kind of like no limits. We're going to like one day we can sit here and talk for three straight days about Cheetos. Who knows? Like, right. I love that. I mean, they are Cheetos are amazing. They are. And there's so many yeah. flavors now. And then, oh gosh, now here I go. And looking at cereal, <laughs> looking at cereal, I've been buying cereal lately and I try not to get the two sugary ones. Like today I bought frosted flakes, I guess. And there's so many cereals now that I never even knew when I was, if I was a kid still, I would, my mind would be, like would explode my, my head would explode over all the they have oh, they have like what is it that has marshmallows they have like rice not rice krispies it's like fruity pebbles with marshmallows or something it's ridiculous i'm just like i just need some cereal i don't really care i don't need like chocolate lucky charms with marshmallows and like all this other crazy stuff they need to just come out with a cereal called pure sugar cubes flakes or something like that's all right. it is there's hardly any actual like cereal or corn or flour any kind of like actual base in this stuff anymore it's all sugar and i mean there's there's literally a breakfast cereal called uh cookie crisp i mean yeah. you it's, know it's just we chocolate chip cookies. Up, yeah we gave up on nutritional value a long time ago yeah i mean here i go with i, I did not plan this but i just happened to have a box of lucky charms nearby oh <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, Lucky Charms is good. They have chocolate ones now. They have, like, they had Lucky Charms. Gosh, something was different about them. It was like, I don't know. It's just all these gimmicks with their cereal. Like, uh, Count Chocula and then Cookie Crisps. And, and the Cookie Crisp is, like, literally just little miniature cookies. Uh, and I don't know why I keep looking into my microphone. Like, can you see me? Okay. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Yeah, it's I created a backstory behind those characters when I was a kid, because you know originally it was what I remember originally was the man and the dog, and they were like I thought at first it was the Hamburglar, because it was kind of like that, right? And it was like the Cookie Crisp burglar, I guess, and the dog, and like you know for years they were like oh let's steal this cereal, so they had the right idea, because the rabbit on tricks was like I just want some cereal, but he he wouldn't he was too nice I would have just stolen it. Because at that point, you're trying for like 50 years to eat some cereal, and they never let you just take it. But I created the backstory. I'm like, okay, well, they went to rehab and for a like crime or whatever, and the man refused to go. So he stayed in prison, and the dog was released. Because you noticed years later, it, it was just a random dog mascot. There was no man anymore. And then I figured he got old and retired, and they brought the wolf in. I, my, my mind as a kid, even then, was right, like, right. I was smart enough to notice the differences because most kids are just like, ooh, ooh, they don't care what, what's on the box. They just eat it. It's like, it's a cartoon guy. Yum, yum, yum. But I'm like, wait a minute. That guy's different. Where's the dog? Like, what happened? Why is there a wolf? <laughs> I asked these questions when I was eight or nine years old. But when I was eight or nine years old, we didn't have amazing shows like Superman and Lois. Yeah, that was a good segue from yeah. serial to Superman and Lois. I mean, hey, because I used to watch cartoons in the mornings and would watch – it's interesting that we're talking about Superman and Lois because it's like, I mean, just a, one of those memories. I was like, I was eating cereal, watching TV, and I remember watching uh, Lois and Clark right uh, on Sunday evenings. I think it was came on at like eight or nine on Sundays. And now that this show's on, it's not on Sundays anymore. But I mean, I don't think it was on Sundays. But we talk about it on Sundays. When so, when when the show first aired, the pilot came on on Sunday. That's what I thought. Yeah. They had switched to Tuesdays pretty quick, I think, and then they went on that break for a while, and then came back. So, and were you were you a um, a Dean Cain fan? I, I really liked the show. Yeah, I like Dean Cain in general. So, and I need to catch up on some Supergirl because I have not watched that show regularly since before Crisis. I think I watched that season because of Crisis, and then before Crisis, I didn't see maybe the previous two or three seasons or two seasons. I can't remember. Um, it was a long time ago when I just stopped watching. I didn't stop watching it. I just missed a couple of them and gave up. Because um, it was kind of losing me back then anyway. But I loved so, how Dean Cain was there. 
yeah. for that show. I, you know, Superman uh, for for Supergirl. Um, I really feel like 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 some of these other shows. The the early seasons were the better ones. Yeah. Um, especially with the with Cat Grant and her involvement. Mm -hmm. um, it has been neat to see her develop. I think as a as a person and to see the involvement of the DEO. Um, I think that's been yeah. good as well. Um, but I think it's always hard. It's it's kind of hard to just see shows that um, I think they just kind of run out of things to talk about at some point. So yeah, they they really do. And with, with, I don't know what got me on Supergirl. I lost my interest. <laughs> I, I think it was the fact that we discussed this before. It wasn't that they had a coming out storyline with Alex. It was the fact that she seemed to be the star of the show. Like every episode I watched, it was all about her, and Supergirl was there for like five minutes. To be the whole the CW theme of, well, let's talk about it and love conquers all, and then, then it's okay because you don't have the strength to fight this villain, but if I love you, you do. And it, I don't know, it was just more about her than anything else, and it just kind of pulled me away because I was like, wait, I love the story arm when it first started, but then they just focused on her, and it just, I don't know, it's kind of like watching. Steve Urkel, or not Steve Urkel, but Family <laughs> Matters. Family Matters. I meant Steve Urkel, but um, well, as a kid, we called it Steve Urkel. Like, we didn't call it Family Matters. Um, but it's like watching that show, and they only focus on Judy Winslow. Like, it just, you lose it. Like, it just, you can't. But I need to go back and rewatch. I really do catch up on all that. But with Superman shows in general, but any show, Supergirl included, I really, even the original Supergirl with, um, why is her name not fresh in my mind? Um, the original Supergirl in like, was it the late 70s, 80s, the movie? Um, that was great. But out of all those shows or movies, I really have to say that Superman and Lois is my favorite. Even above like the Chris Reed Superman movie. Uh, the first two, the three, four, and five, six, seven, or whatever, however many they did, those weren't the greatest. Um, I always loved Richard Pryor, but those movies just weren't the greatest. Um, but one and two, but still above all those, I don't know what it is about that show. It's, you know, the cast is amazing. The writing is awesome. The stories are real. And a lot of the stories, even, I even like it better than Smallville. A lot of those yeah. stories kind of like, I don't know if they got the ideas or the inspiration from Smallville, but they focused on a lot of the same issues, but they go deeper. They talk more and more and more about like, the life and the people than like the situation because small it was all about like oh Lana doesn't love me dad it's okay son I know oh my eyeballs are burning you know it's like and they that's kind of they would rush through things they right. would have one episode would be all about he had this deep issue but then he resolved it by the end of the hour whereas Superman and Lois is like three four or five episodes they really tackle the real issue and treat it like like real life because in real life your problems don't go away in 22 to 45 minutes right so i like how they kind of if they planned it that way probably to some degree but i think it's really cool i think what we're seeing in in superman and lois is we're seeing how you can you can talk about a topic right like um uh, like mental health mm -hmm. or uh about miscarriage or um, you can talk about um, uh, alcoholism or abuse um, or parental separation. Uh, a lot of those kinds of topics, you can bring those up, and and yet it doesn't become a show about that, right? right. I think that the the writers have done us a great job of still giving us um, a great plot and a great story where mm -hmm. these issues are intertwined into them. I think that's the problem with, um, with, with Supergirl and with Batwoman is that they've become shows about a certain topic uh, right. where it's so heavy handed. And, and that's the difference I think with, with Superman and Lois that the issue is, is just very artfully and creatively, you know, weaved into the storyline. Mm -hmm. You don't forget um, who the characters are 
where like with Batwoman, a lot of the first season was like, where's Alice? We have to find Alice. It's like, okay, I get it that she's like the main villain, but you forget it's about Batwoman. You think it's just about a girl fighting her long lost sister, which is what it was, but it has nothing about Batwoman in it. Well, it does. I mean, eventually it does, but you just lose it. You don't really know why you're watching it anymore. It, it, yeah. Batman was I loved Batwoman. I'm not like trying to trash it or anything, but just saying, like your points you made of, you know, they're not trying to be a show about something else. They're these characters having these problems. Yeah. I'm going to try to put the, the uh, <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, I'm going to try to put the synopsis up. If it, I think it might be too long to fit on the screen. Okay. So we're going to see what happens. All right. Um, I might have to move my camera so I can see this. It does cut it off at the end. So we'll just read part of it, and then, you know, you'll get the idea. It's, you know, like, Irons is interrogated at the DOD, but wants to only speak to Lois Lane. Jonathan and Lois explore Irons' RV where they find photos. Is this the right episode, or is this the old episode? Did I copy the wrong one? <laughs> Wait, Jonathan explores well, this is the one from this week. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, good. I'm sorry, I got it mixed up in that. But we hadn't, um, we, we don't think we even had a chance to go and talk about who uh, John Irons is. That's true. So basically, you know, without reading the full, because that's pretty long, I didn't realize it was going to be so long. I just copied and pasted it as a like, quote. Um, it's like half the episode in text. Right. But the basic point of it, I guess, is, you know, we find out who this Captain Luther has been this whole time. And it turns out it was John Henry Irons. And we're like, whoa, okay. Um, and then, you know, they're investigating him. They're kind of spying on his RV after he's been arrested. And, well, there's trouble in the RV. And Jonathan is in a situation. And there's a big kind of outburst with Lois and, and Jonathan. And, you, and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then the kind of end point of it where they come back together and have this emotional scene. After seeing that, immediately I tweeted, as you know, um, to our, our friend, hopefully soon, um, the guy himself. Um, yeah. Jordan is pretty cool. Like He responds to a lot of people. I've noticed. I've read his Twitter feed. And so hopefully soon he'll be on the show as a guest. But that emotional like, level of those of those scenes and that that relationship with them is amazing. And uh, but yeah, John Henry Irons, like we kind of learn that he's. Well, Do they say what Earth he was, or just from another Earth? We don't know exactly which Earth he's from. Well, I mean, again, we we because of how everything you know after after crisis, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I don't think they even realized that there were. Still, other Earths out there. Yeah, they don't know anymore. I think they, yeah. they think his Earth is gone, and he's just in, in his world. He was married to Lois Lane and had a kid, and Superman killed her, and so he set out to go find Superman and kill them. Just kind of like Lex Luthor in Crisis, um, and that's, it kind of ties in perfectly because you think he's Lex Luger. Lex Luger. I'm thinking of wrestling. I was watching old wrestling earlier. Um, Lex Luthor in, in uh, Crisis tried to do that. And then you think he's Lex Luthor. So it kind of ties in and like they kind of switch it. It's like, no, he's kind of doing the same thing, but it's not him. And I don't know. I mean, I don't like how the episode ended because it kind of goes to the, um, the theme of what we talked about of like, just talk it out. Kind of. But I really loved how advanced this RV is. And it makes me wonder like how he built that. Did he build it himself? Because all the tech thought he was Lex Luthor. And so I thought he would steal it, but Lex Luthor wouldn't be driving around in an RV. But I don't know, maybe he was. Maybe that Lex Luthor was like a camper and liked to go on road trips. I don't who knows. I mean I think that you know the the truth is that nobody would have expected that a camper would be would have all of that tech in it, right? True. I mean, it's it's the definition of low profile, mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I'm sure that's a part of it. It's it's camouflage, right? Um, Definitely, and, right? But the the fact that it's heavily armored, that it's got that security system, it's got all of that tech and weaponry in it, um, you know, and that's really what got Jonathan in trouble. Jonathan, um, 
for for quite a while has been feeling like he is kind of like the pinky, right? He's he's yeah. really kind of feeling useless. How does he? What what good is he when um, when his dad's Superman and uh, his little brother is has powers and even his mother is the greatest reporter on the planet. Yeah, and she can weasel her way in any situation and, and right get in there. And so I think I think there there's definitely this urgency for Jonathan to try to prove himself. Um, and as mm-hmm. we know that that old adage about you know curiosity killing the cat, he went in there and uh, and starts you know snooping and inadvertently sets off the security camera right or it sets off the security system and gets himself trapped in there and almost dies. He was like this close, literally, because you see Superman's finally swoop in, like, and he, oh, even Superman was almost too late. Yeah, and, and, and the machine guns start going off, and it's just like, what, really? Yeah, and, and and at that moment, um, you know, Lois snaps, right? Yeah. And throughout the entire episode, we have this little back and forth of Lois with her therapist talking about what had happened and her oh. guilt. Mm-hmm. And um, and we don't really, I don't think, I didn't initially make the connection. Yeah, I didn't either until like, it's one of those things where I think they want you to go, okay, what's going on? And then keep flipping. And then you realize by the end of it, it could, kind of comes together. I love stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I, you know, not to talk about myself too much, but on the script that I wrote, it's one of the things I have this little broken pieces randomly of the character writing a letter. And by the end of the movie, you realize, okay, that comes together and you know why he's writing a letter and who the letters to. So I really like that kind of stuff. I like that little side story of, of like, what's going on with that? Like, right. And cause you, you think, and then by the time you get to the ending, it's just like, it means so much more. Right. I, it was amazing to me that that there was Lois, and you could just tell. I mean, we know that she's an actor, right? Mm-hmm. She's not a real, she's not a real parent, and yet the way that she loses it uh, on 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 John, yeah. and um, and you could just see the way that John's face literally just drains, like yeah. he is he is completely destroyed when his mother calls him out and screams at him. And I and I kind of had always gotten the feeling that that's not the way this family operates. I mean, I'm sure you know there are some families where getting yelled and screamed at, oh, that's just a normal Tuesday. Yeah, that's kind of how I grew up. Yeah, but you kind of get the feeling like in in this household, amongst the the Kents, it's like, well, we have a disagreement. You go up and upstairs and think about what you did, and your father and I will be downstairs talking about it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like in my house. Um, but uh, but we see this as one of those moments where she she lets him have it. Yeah. And, and uh, you can tell that's never happened before. Because, no. Like, I didn't see it as too big of a deal. Honestly, because like you said, some families grow up and it's, that's normal for them. And I wasn't like screamed at or threatened or like my parents didn't chase me with a machete or anything crazy. But I mean, there was. If you did something bad and really bad or dumb, you got yelled at. Yeah. And yeah. from here, you can tell Jonathan like that that look. I was just like, I have felt that look before. Right. I, I know what's going on here. There was something very, there was something very viscerally real yeah. about that scene. I and and we and we know the the point where Lois went from, okay, she's an angry, scared mother, and then we we see the point where she crosses the line, and she calls him stupid and foolish and she's like get out of my sight yeah right no, no get out and you're like okay so she um she definitely crossed the line um mm. i i loved i loved how um you know clark essentially is like um i you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna mark this one as a you're not okay yeah. uh, you're not okay at all yeah it was it was crazy, and it, I felt that. And that's why I love that scene so much because I've been on the end of that, 
and I've been the one doing the screaming at someone. And yeah. So I know how both feel. And then her feeling of you can see that instant, like as soon as he walks away, she's like, oh crap. And like you can kind of tell part of her is like, I should not have done that already. And then that then then you get to the point where okay, that's why she's talking to a therapist. Yeah. Um, and then while she's talking to a therapist, we learn exactly why she blew up on him. She was kind of projecting this anger and this hurt that she thought was gone and that she had buried, which is something I went through uh, back around the end of last year uh, to, in December, January. I thought, you know, I thought I grieved for my father, but then I was like, it didn't. But I did, but not to the level I thought I did. And it, when the anniversary date came around, it came back. So with her, this trauma that she felt, you know, she, they revealed that she had a miscarriage. Yeah. And my first thought was, where in the timeline did she have a miscarriage? Because I had one baby. Now they have two. If there's going to be a third one, I was being a nerd about it. But, um, but yeah, I, I know that kind of like feeling of you thought you were okay with something and then something triggers it. And then you're like, whoa, no, I'm not okay with this. And so I liked that. I didn't like that it was sad. I didn't like that she lost a child and all this and that. But I liked how real it was and how you connect with it. And that, you know, that was crazy. And you could feel it. I mean, it was so real. And that's the acting and the writing itself. They convince you that this is real. Yeah. Even though it's not, they convince you that it is. I think that is the. So, so often my criticism of Superman is that. I, I I usually feel like Superman is sort of one dimensional. Yeah, right? normally he he really doesn't have any crises in his life. He just sort of you know he never he never really faces an issue that he can't punch his way through. And and this show really flips that on its head that that for all of Superman's strength the, and and powers, there are some things that his that he's completely powerless to deal with. Right, none of his powers can help him to be a better parent. Mm -hmm. None of his powers can help he and his wife deal with the loss of a child. And and I think that that is, you know, just as just as kryptonite makes him vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, I think that his family kind of reveals another vulnerability mm -hmm. um, that we that we have not really seen before. And I like that about about him it 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 makes them all um relatable and human and, and yeah and, and and definitely as a as a parent myself i've had my times when i have said and done things that i regret and and you and you have to realize it you got to go and and apologize mm -hmm. you know man i really screwed up i'm sorry will you will you forgive me yeah, and then I'm not a parent, but I, you know, being a child and then being the one to lash, not to lash out, but to not understand why your parents do the things that they do or why they might have a good reason for it. Or when they do go over the line and yell at you, you don't understand why. You don't know what they're going through in, internally. So you just lash out back sometimes. Right. As he's done in the show. That episode, he was just like, wait, what? But. Some episodes he's come back like this is not fair. Like I want to do this, I want to do that. I can't because you're always focused on him. He's stupid and dumb. And I think that was like a couple episodes ago. He kind of went off on his brother, and that's when he broke his arm. Um, but I know what that's like. So, and then you realize you learn the, the real issue, and you're like, oh wait, if I'd have known that, I would never have yelled back at them. But that whole thing was just great. I know, and you I just and can't I, get over it. <clears throat> And I think that the good thing for, for Jonathan is that, you know, um, uh, you know, Jordan and, and Clark, they both have powers mm -hmm. and, uh, and Lois and Jonathan, they're both powerless. And, and she gives him that, that speech about how we are, um, we are the, um, uh, we are the extraordinary humans, right? And sometimes all we can do is just hold the wrench, right? Yeah. I and, love that uh, line, too. It, isn't it great? I loved it. Isn't it great? And I think it was her way of just letting him know, I understand what you're going through, and you're not alone, and we're going to deal with this together. Mm -hmm. I think that is 
And that's what he needed to hear is uh, that she understood. And so, that moment where they came, kind of came back together and were friends again or whatever you want to call it. Um, that right there really got to me, I think more than the initial argument because it's like touching to say, okay, well, you know, they were in this really terrible situation, but now they're back. And that alone is just comforting. Like, oh, yay, they're back. But, you know, it kind of reflects my own experiences too, like arguments with my mom, my own mom or my dad, things that like, oh my gosh, I hate this. And then that moment where you're like, I'm so sorry, you hug and stuff. It was so real. Yeah. It just it, every moment of that show, except for the, maybe the superpower part is relatable. Every, every little second, every little tick. And I love how, you know, the two kids, I love, because typically, you know, uh, Jordan, you would think he's, you know, he's the one with powers, but he's also the one with maybe some anxiety issues and some, and some um, social issues. Like, you know, you would think typically he would be the one that was like the outcast kid that didn't do anything. And then Jonathan's the football guy and he's like the popular kid. But I love how they did that role reverse on him. We've talked about that a million times, but it's just so perfect. And if they would have, if they would have switched it and had, okay, Jonathan is the football star and is the is the super kid, and every, and then Jordan was the one that's kind of like alone holding the wrench. I don't think it would have been as good. It would have probably made more sense in the beginning, but it wouldn't have been as good. Right. They definitely mess with our expectations. Yeah, and that's good because like with most shows, they they give you what you expect. And right, it's, and it's more predictable. It's less okay, awesome. Didn't see this coming, and I love how that's like the only CW show really that does that on a regular basis that I've seen in a while. Right, or one of them at least. I got to say that I I enjoyed even the even the side story. Um, mm. You got you got Sarah who's trying out yeah. for that that talent show, and um, you know, and her dad Kyle. Who is like? It seems really excited about uh, you know getting involved, getting her involved in it, and um, then at the last minute he doesn't show up, and we see uh, we see Jordan uh, say, "Oh, I can do it," and he runs over and plays piano for her as she totally you know blows this out of the water <laughs> with her with her song. I mean, it was great and. You it really got to me too because I think that that's that episode, not that episode, that scene, and specifically, it was like kind of touching because he was so afraid and they had the whole conversation. And I never thought that, like, oh wow, that means he's gonna go do this. Yeah, and I'm like, that's definitely not gonna happen anytime soon. And then boom, there he goes. And you know, he's kind of doing it just to impress her because he likes her and all this, but still, that's what teenagers do, they do things to impress girls. Or yeah. boys, or whoever they, they want to impress the people they're interested in, and but still, it also helped him overcome this fear. And I've been in that situation too. I've never played piano for a girl on stage <laughs> in front of a bunch of people, but a similar situation in my own high school graduation. I was, you know, nervous, scared because I they asked anybody want to give a speech because like they didn't really have anything planned. They didn't have like they had a couple of things like this speech from this teacher, this speech from this person, but they didn't have like a list of this or this or this. So they were like, well, we want to fill out the time. So if anybody wants to give speeches, you can write them, give them to us. We'll approve them and all this and that. Um, and I did that because no one expected it from me. I was like in school, especially I was the quiet kid. I didn't, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I had a few in school, but I wasn't part of any, kind of social group or club or anything. So I probably was one of those kids that I was more like the Jordan than I was definitely that I was more like him. Yeah. Um, I could have stood behind the, the water fountain and no one would have ever known I was, it was there. No, no one would ever know I existed. So when I got up there, they're like, Hey, that's that guy. And I speak for like, I don't know. It felt like six hours, but it was probably like two minutes or three minutes. Um, but no one expected that from me. And I don't know, my, even my parents, I think I told them I was going to be part of it because they're going to wonder like where I'm at when I'm walking around. But not many people knew. And there was like a really cute girl that was also speaking right before I was. So we were in line and she grabs on my arm like, you have to walk up there with me. You have to be there next to me. I'm just like, I will. I promise you I will. <laughs> 
And that was not a hard thing to convince me to do. But yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, never did that before. Never did anything like that before. And I got up there and I overcame the fear. I still get nervous talking in front of huge groups, but I mean, it pushed me a little bit closer to that. Yeah. So I really like the fact that they did that. I think that, that for all of us, there's, there's that moment where we get a chance to shine mm-hmm. or we, we step up and do something that's completely out of left field, out of our comfort zone. And we realize, wow, I'm, I'm capable of so much more than I ever thought was possible. And um, I, I just, I love how Jordan, Jordan comes to the rescue um, without powers yeah, without um, to powers. go and, to go and, uh, and help her out. And so I thought that was just a really, it was a really sweet moment. I, but I also thought it was really sad that her father, her father didn't show up when she needed him. And the reasoning behind it was like, I get it. I would have been pretty mad too. You find out your wife lied to you about a job opportunity, which we all know is the right thing because she was saving him from the corruption as we all know that it's going to happen. Um, but he instantly in that moment got super selfish. It was like, me, me, me. I'm going to ignore and completely forget that my kid has a thing that I'm heavily involved in and we've rehearsed for like days. Right. I'm going to completely forget all that because I'm worried about my own ego and my own wants. And it makes you really want to hate him even more. Right. I, I really, I know. I, I really get a feeling like the Cushing family, there's – there's all this subtext that's mm-hmm. going on in their family. We know that um, that Kyle and Lana have not been sleeping together. Yeah. He's been sleeping on the couch. And for a while I thought, well, maybe he's doing that because, you know, when, you, when you're a member of the fire department, um, you've got to be ready to go at all hours of the day. And he might be sleeping on the couch just because – um, he doesn't yeah. want to wake her. Man, it's but it might, the door. Yeah, but but I will tell you that um, the couch has always been a symbol of a man who has been kicked out of the bedroom. Yeah, and um, and I think that is what what we see is not only is his relationship completely broken with Lana, but his relationship with his daughter Sarah is I would say at this point non-existent and. One of the things you'll notice is there is not a scene where Kyle does not have some form of alcohol, right? Yeah. First thing is the first thing we see him do when when we see him in episode one is go get a drink when they're there for the funeral, and I think that um, that Kyle's character he's definitely using alcohol as his coping mechanism. They're definitely going to delve into this idea of, oh, yeah. um, of alcoholism. I mean, um, they've touched on every other issue, like hot button issue, like, like anxiety, depression, uh, loss of a child. Like they've touched on so many of these deep issues. They haven't really talked about alcoholism yet. Right. And you know, like you said, it's like this little foreshadowing every time right. like, there's always an alcoholic drink in his hand. Right. But, but I think that I think what's good about it is like you're aware that that's that's mm-hmm. being brought up and it's being introduced, but it's not like you're getting hit over the head with the uh, kinetic hammer right. by that by that issue. And, and I think that what we see again is that you can talk about these things in the show and yet it doesn't just become a show about the issue. And right. I think that is. As long as they continue to do that with their writing, um, they weave it in cleverly. Um, I think that's that's really where it needs to be. Um, I kind of yeah. feel like I kind of feel like that's the sideshow a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of the of the of the episode was dealing with um, uh, John Henry Irons. Um, and being, you know, being interrogated, right. and um, and we see in in that that scene that uh, that Sam Lane has had this entire R and D area using, you know, kryptonite based weapons. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. It was. He had said essentially, 
what? Um, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah. And, um, you know, and you could just tell that that Clark was pissed <laughs> that his own father-in-law was creating weapons to ultimately stop and stop and kill him. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty crazy. But that that entire scene um, where where Superman, you know, fights um, that other um, you know super powered individual, that soldier. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's I'm I'm wondering how long it's going to be. I'm, I'm thinking they're really close before they make another person into one of their super soldiers. And I have a, I have a huge feeling. And I think I've said this before that Kyle is going to end up being one of those soldiers. I really I really feel that too. Um, I mean, it's just like the alcoholism, and it's going to build the resentment and the hate not hatred, but this disconnect between him and his family. And he's going to get depressed, drink more. And then find out, hey Morgan Edge, like my wife lied to me. And then, can I please work for you? And then he's gonna get in there and have all that resentment and anger. And then, boom, there you go. Yeah, I've been concerned with this with the same kind of pattern with uh, with Jonathan. That that Jonathan um, Jonathan has been dealing with this idea of uh, having mm -hmm. this inferiority complex. And I my concern had been that that would lead him also to go and try to get powers via um, Morgan Edge as well. And I um, wonder if they're going to do that to where it works out in the end, sort of like in um, in The Flash. I'm not going to get into time travel too much. But where Savitar was really the, the root of Wally West's powers. And when he had no memory, he had no powers. But then, you know, once Savitar was gone, Wally West's powers stayed because it all worked out. Right. Um, I wonder if that's maybe going to happen here where – Jonathan goes and gets powers and is like all mad and stuff and crazy, but then it works out and he still has his powers. Or if they're going to have them naturally develop, or will he have them at all? Right, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I I know that they did, had an uh, an interview with uh, with Jordan Elsass, uh, and he had said that he had hoped that his character Jonathan did not get powers. Oh wow! Right. Well, and, and you yeah, consider. Yeah. I think that. I think that sometimes, um, there, I think there is there is more to explore with him being a a normal teenage kid in a mm -hmm. family of supers, and how he deals with that. Um, I mean, the the getting superpowers would almost solve some of those issues, and I think he's I think he's a much more interesting character being normal. That's true. Um, you know, with a superpowered brother. Um, but we'll see where what direction the writers take it in. I, I definitely believe that um, that that Kyle Cushing will get powers for as sure. much as his wife is trying to distance him from um, from the business. And we know that all of those people that have been put into this, you know, leadership um, program to develop their potential, uh, <laughs> yeah. all of them. Are basically just human guinea pigs. Yeah, and that's. I think Lana pushing him away from it is pushing him closer to it. Because if, if she was like, "Hey, honey, Morgan Edge wants you to work for him," da 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 da, he probably would have seen the corruption on his own and was like, "You know what, Morgan Edge, you're a dick. I don't like you anymore. We're not friends anymore. We're breaking up." And then like yeah. he would have came to that on his own. But now that his his wife is saying like. Oh no! You no, know, he. There's no job for you, and he finds out she lied, and that's gonna push him closer to it, and he, he's right. gonna be more blinded at at the corruption and the evil that's going on. So I feel like I feel I was trying to figure out where Lana is in all of this, um, and at first I thought maybe Lana had said what she did and didn't bring it up to Kyle because she was trying to protect him. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's where she is. I um, I I don't I don't necessarily think that she is. Um, I, I think she I think she um, she doesn't trust Edge, and she's being careful. But I don't think she quite realizes just how serious it is. I I think that her not getting Kyle involved with the business is that she is she's trying to get some distance. Yeah, from her husband, and yes, 
she wants something that is that is finally hers. Because like, he's always like, I'm the big, bad, awesome provider. You need right. me. You need me. You're nothing yeah. without me. And it's like, well, watch this. Right. Just like just like she had gotten the the promotion that Kyle thought he deserved. Mm -hmm. I think she she felt like she wanted to keep it that way. And I honestly, um, I feel like, you know, of course, a lot of people might have already thought about this, but I think Morgan Edge is, is creating this wedge on purpose as part of his plan to lure Kyle to him. Like, he didn't want Lana to tell him about it. He didn't want her to go, yay, look. I think he's the mastermind behind the, their their issues. Well, I, I think I think partly, I you know, Leslie, uh, Leslie Lar going to Kyle and letting him know that uh, that that Edge was really interested yeah. in getting him on board. Um, for me, you know that Leslie's been listening. Mm -hmm. You know that she's been paying attention. Oh yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, uh, she's the she's the devil. <laughs> she really is. She's, um, she's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't know as if, I don't really know as if, um, if Edge ha is trying to drive a wedge between them, but, um, maybe not. Yeah. I had that idea. I had that thought just because it's like, well, it would, cause he wants the guy, he wants Kyle there and you know, he wants him, um, cause he's like the biggest supporter and he's like, well, everybody's going to trust this guy. But I don't know. Maybe that was just my thought. Whenever you know, how do how do you get the guy? Because he's the nicest guy in the world. And you can you can trick him into thinking like Morgan Edge could trick him into thinking he's a nice dude. Yeah. But then at the end of it, when you finally go to him and say, "I'm going to use you now to to do what I want you to do," he's probably still going to say no by the end of it. Because I think yeah. deep inside he's a good person. He thinks he's a good person now, but he's doing these terrible things. But he doesn't know they're terrible yet, and it's like. How do you convince that guy to do it? We'll turn him against everybody else. So I don't know. I, maybe I watch too much TV. Maybe it doesn't go that deep. But it'd be a nice little twist, or maybe not, depending on how the rest of the story kind of unfolds. It may not yeah. make sense at all for that to happen. I think that I think definitely Edge had, Edge <laughs> needs people who are um, one hundred percent on board. Mm -hmm. um, you know they're the much people. They're much easier to control if right. they already if they already have allegiance to him. Mm -hmm. And so I think Eric would certainly be the kind of person um, that he's looking for. You notice that Edge, um, you know, tends to go after people who are they're kind of like natural leaders, right? Yeah. The idea that he went and turned somebody um, in the military, and you know, Kyle's standing. Um, in you know, in the fire department as the fire chief. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think that I think that Edge has been planning on um, on using Kyle for a, for quite a while now. Yeah, that's it what I really like think. Probably part of it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it really does. Strong leadership type characters because those are going to so, be the best ones. Yeah, you know the the one thing we haven't talked about, which I think was huge, is. Um, is the revelation that um, that John Henry Irons Steele, as we now know him as, um, that he and uh, and Lois had been married mm -hmm. and had a daughter? Yeah. Um, uh, for me, that was a that was kind of a mind blowing moment. And at first, it was crazy because I thought that uh, that John Henry Irons was was really uh, Captain Luther. And I'm like, Lois Lane and uh, Luther. <laughs> um, I mean, even, it, it's yeah. possible, but it's just hard to believe in any universe, in any world, that that would happen. Right. But even, but even then, this idea that uh, that she and John Henry Irons had been um, had been married and had this uh, had a, had a daughter, and then they get, they witness uh, they witness her on TV. Mm -hmm. Getting murdered by Superman. Yeah, and I go, that was I go. Awesome. It was it was awesome, and it was it was horribly tragic. And you go, 
wow, I understand now why John wants to kill all Kryptonians. I mean, if somebody did that to my family, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm not a violent person, but man, you, you, you mess with my family and it's over. And, mm -hmm. uh, and now, gosh, talk about adding insult to injury that, um, mm -hmm. that Lois um, has a, he, I don't think he realizes just how close Lois and Superman are. I was going to say, like, what if he found out? I, I think it's inevitable. I think he's going to find out eventually and then turn around and be like, you know what? I'm going to kill you now. Just because. Yeah. I, I didn't like how that ended because it ended up, you know, he's a bad guy. He doesn't. He's a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. It's one of those weird, like, kind of gray areas. But you see him as the bad guy. And at the end of it, literally after he tries to kill Superman, they're just, they talk about their feelings and let him go away. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not as bad as the Flash is with that, but it still was like, punch him in the face or something. Like, do, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it wasn't so terrible because it actually fit in that because he doesn't. And that in that situation, it wasn't like he was about to blow up the entire Earth or anything crazy. So he was just misguided and confused and really just hurting. So I don't, I don't know. I think talking to him worked in that situation because he was like, "Look, that's not the same Lois Lane." He's like, "You're right." It is. I, I will say that it's not the. It is not the only method that they deal with solving problems mm -hmm. uh, in the show. Um, right. And, so and doing it, it once in a while is okay, but it's fine. Uh, I, yeah. I I feel like what they're trying to do is reveal that um, that that uh, John Henry Irons has good reason to feel the way that he does mm -hmm. about Superman, um, I, and I think that it allows us to walk a mile in his shoes a little bit. Yeah. Um, and and I think that it, um, you know, I I I definitely believe that they're they're going to be setting things up that um, to bring him on as a member of the of the team at some point. Yeah, because we haven't really seen a super team yet. All these shows they do they hang you know, on the Flash, of course, Team Flash, Arrow had you know Team Arrow, the Legends, uh, you know. Even Supergirl, you had yeah. you know, all the other like Brainy, Brainy, and I keep on calling him Brainy. His name is Brainiac, but still, you can't say Brainiac; it doesn't seem right. Um, uh, you know, Martian Manhunter, all these people, Superman and Lois. It's really just Superman. Yeah, there's no. It makes me wonder if, after Supergirl is over, if Supergirl might come into this show at some point. You would imagine it's, at some it's point. It's possible. It's possible. Um, I, 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 I'm curious to see if they're going to interact. Uh, at, in some way, shape, or form, but I'm kind of glad right now that they're they're really focusing on creating yeah. their own little universe at this point, um, so we can yeah. build these characters. Um, so I think that that is that's been a good thing, um, and I think that I, I, again, I just feel like right now, uh, Superman and Lois across the board, um, in as far as the writing, the acting. Uh, the the CGI work, all of it is just it's, oh gosh, and I love the fact that I know a lot of people like the blue, the blue heat vision. I love the red. I don't know what it is, but the blue never felt right to me. I I, I just I can't remember how it turned from blue to red or why it was blue to begin with. There was some sort of explanation there at some point, I think, but I don't know. I'm just happy to see red lasers coming out of people's eyeballs. I I will say that the red looks far more intimidating. Yeah. Right? When you see that when you see that red glow, you're like, wow, I you're you don't realize just how close to death you are at this point. Yep. Blue just kind of seems like oh, he'll be okay. He's not that mad. Right. Or or like the light version. You know, if you get like a mobile app, it's like the free version. And then if you get the red, that's the, that's the full paid version. That's where you right. get the most damage. Like I don't right. know. It just does. It's blue. Just seems more calming too. It's a calming color, and so to have 
this the deadliest thing he can do basically is shoot laser beams out of his eyeballs be like a soothing color it just felt weird yeah yeah i i feel like i feel like a lot in this show is talking about the nature of anger mm -hmm. right and how people deal with their emotions right um we we see in in one of the episodes where um you know superman gets hit with the the kryptonite bullets yeah and um uh, and he has that moment where like he could go and take that soldier out and he you know uh rips the kryptonite bullets out and throws it away and <laughs> destroys it and gets right in the guy's face and he's like stand down and we see just how close he comes to losing it. But he had the lasers in his eyes. Yeah, but but we see it's the same conversation that he has with with uh, with Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. That he has to keep himself in check at all times, otherwise he could become that very thing people are afraid that he yeah. might be. That black Superman that kills Lois Lane. Yeah. And, I, and again, I really feel like it's a very humanizing thing. How many people deal with anger, right? You get angry and how do you deal with it? And I think that that is, um, it's a, it's a very real understanding yeah. and you know, so I, I, again, I love, I love this show. I like where it's going. Um, I had, I did have a question and it, it is related. Mm -hmm. So we know that, that, um, that John Henry Irons, Steel, mm -hmm. uh, but he has the kinetic hammer. Yeah. Uh, but didn't you were in Elseworlds? Um, Lois had the kinetic hammer. Ah, oh, wow. I'm trying to remember that. I haven't seen that in a while. I could have sworn that Lois had the kinetic hammer or a kinetic hammer um, back in Elseworlds. And I had always wondered where did she get the hammer from, um, but it, to me it just seemed it seemed interesting that John Henry Irons now has has essentially the same thing. And I was wondering is it the same hammer? Um, he's just able to summon it, or did he create his own version of that hammer? Yeah, um, I mean I don't remember. World? I don't. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what happened with Elseworlds. I mean, I know the overall, you know, story, but like with with Lois, I don't remember much. But you know, if nothing else, it comes down to, you know, um, he had you know the, the guy. I'm, I'm terrible with names, but he had the book, and he was changing the world around in reality. He could have been like, you know, it'd be funny give her a hammer, and then she has it like ha ha, ha. and then he's like, you know what would be funny? She didn't have a hammer anymore. I don't know. I'll have to go back and she had something. I remember something, but I can't so, remember exactly what it was. So here is here is what um, what I found out. I just, just looked it up, and mm -hmm. um, this is it's it's called the Solar Hammer. Okay. So um, yeah, that's what she has. I can't remember uh, that now. So she has the she has the Solar Hammer. Um, uh, but yeah, it looks a lot like the kinetic hammer. Um, mm. So maybe, maybe Lois just maybe maybe the, there's something about a hammer. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, back then, Elseworlds, I think, like Endgame or something was out, maybe, and they were like, "Oh, Thor, yay, let's make a hammer." No, uh, that was kind of a joke. But I mean, honestly, yeah. Thor. I mean, if they, if they come out with a shield and a, and a robot guy that can fly, well, they've already had robot guys that can fly, so like maybe. Maybe they're trying to beat the Avengers. Well, no. I mean, they they literally have um, what is it? Um, not Sentinel, uh, Guardian, right? Yeah. I mean, Guardian is is the DC version of Captain America. Yeah, basically. I mean, they don't really have a Hulk yet, or a Hulk, a um, yeah, Hulk. That's what I meant to say. They have Fuerza, who's like She Hulk. So I mean. It basically is she hulk in a sense like that um now i'm just sitting here like okay now spider-man go or right. where's wolverine um but just imagine if marvel had shows like this like a marvel verse of these wonderful shows that came oh, on like 
a different network like TNT or some like edgy or some cool sounding thing. That would be amazing. Like imagine the Spider-Man series or even an Iron Man series where his little girl, um, after loving everyone 3000 grows up to be the new iron woman, I guess, or whatever, you know, that's an interesting idea. Um, but yeah, Marvel doesn't seem to do too well on TV. They do better in short series runs and movies, which is great because their stories are all amazing anyway. But I do like, and it kind of goes back to what Mark Guggenheim said on the show when he first came on, you know, I, I kind of complained about how professor Hulk said all the, all the back to the future stuff was bullshit. I was like, right. oh, I didn't like that. He was like, well, you got to think of what they're talking about in that movie because Marvel always had a different approach to reality and to situations in general. And DC was kind of the opposite. And he kind of put it into perspective. I was like, okay, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it makes sense for the Marvel stories and characters. They work better on film than they do on, say, a weekly TV show. Right. Because of that difference. But and I, think why, they, I think they could. They could. They, I, I think we we saw on the the Netflix shows like mm -hmm. Jessica Jones and um, and uh, Luke Cage and, and Daredevil. Daredevil. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought those were successful, and those they were, were good. those were Mar Marvel. Um, mm -hmm. I think the only one that I didn't like out of the bunch was Iron Fist. I didn't watch Iron Fist at all, and I, I didn't really get into Daredevil. Not because I don't like. I didn't like the show. It seemed great, but it's just one of those things where the character you're just not interested in the character in general, and so you really can't get behind it. Like I've I will, never I will, been a huge Daredevil fan. Yeah, I will tell you that um, the Daredevil show it was I think only three seasons. Yeah, it was very short. But there's not a bad season in Daredevil. Oh, it's it's all it's really good. It's really good. Um, the guy who plays Matt Murdock mm. um, uh, does a really convincing job of being blind. And I've seen a lot of really bad people uh, attempt to pull off being blind. Yeah. Um, but he does a, he does a fantastic job. You really should go back and, uh, and watch that if you haven't. That's another um, person that has done a good job of being blind was on Smallville. And uh, John Glover who played Lionel Luther. Yeah. He was like he he was his character was blind for several weeks and then you, you find out that he was faking it like in the right. show he's like ha 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 I can see you now but but yeah I definitely do want to go revisit some of those shows yeah you I, should you know. I, since we are we work I think we're kind of making our way um, mm -hmm. uh, you know away from uh, Superman and Lois um, I do want to plug a show that I've been watching uh, mm -hmm. Doom Patrol yeah it's another one I need to get back into I saw a little bit of it. Not a lot, but a little bit, and it's so. It's weird, isn't it? it it's weird. I mean, for sure. I might have seen like the first episode or so. I haven't seen much at all, but it is definitely different. You yeah, know, it's, it's it's a lot different than Titans, and I'm getting excited for Titans again because that's coming up relatively soon. I've been seeing set photos, and you know, different promotional images. You know, Raven has like the full cloak in one 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 uh, picture I've seen, so that's really cool. Uh, don't really know where they're going, and I've seen Star Girl. That's that's amping up to to you know. I'm getting excited, and that's coming up soon. Yeah, just, we're less than two months away, I think, at this point. Um, so just just allow me to kind of plug, um, yeah, yeah. Doom Patrol a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so you you think about like the Justice League and and Titans. Those are like the A list groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the the epitome of of superheroes. Um, but the, the the members of Doom Patrol, they're really a, a they're 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 a bunch of misfits, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got Crazy Jane who has multiple personalities, and each personality has a different superpower. That is um, pretty cool. You have Elastigirl, but she's essentially a blob, and uh, and she doesn't know really how to use her abilities. Uh, okay. You've got you've got Robot Man, uh, who. Uh, is played by Brendan Fraser. Um, That's Brendan Fraser. It's Brendan Fraser. Oh my god! Absolutely, gosh. I didn't realize that. That um, makes me want to watch it all over again. Like now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got you got Negative Man, who he's like a he's a he's a, a burn survivor. That's why he's wrapped mm -hmm. up in cloth. But he's got this negative spirit that comes out, and um, 
uh, can fly and fight hmm. for him. Um, Cyborg is a part of the team. Um, but we really see the, the struggle of Cyborg uh, on on Doom Patrol. And then, of course, you know, um, you've got Timothy Dalton as the chief, and he's really sort of a Professor X kind mm -hmm. of person. Um, somebody had said that Doom Patrol came out long before the X-Men, and uh, many have believed that the character of the chief um, – is what inspired uh, Stan Lee to create the character of, um, you know, Professor X. Wow, um, that's yeah. Both, both guys are in wheelchairs, and they're essentially manipulating uh, teams of superpowered individuals. Um, I think the Chief is slightly more manipulative, uh, but um, interesting correlation. And then if you yeah. like, if you like Alan Tudyk. Uh, the guy from Firefly, uh, he plays mm -hmm. Mr. Nobody. Um, okay. And so the show just has so many different amazing, uh, you know, fourth wall breaks. And, um, you know, he taught Mr. Nobody is the evil gene is the evil villain who, you know, he's he's acts as the narrator and mm -hmm. uh, and talks about the show like he knows it's a show. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, anyway, I, I love it. It's it's really quirky. It's offbeat. It's weird, mm -hmm. um, but it's also a lot of fun. And I, I like um, that. It sounds yeah. really cool. I like that kind of like narrating kind of aspect of breaking the fourth wall and this and that. Like, like I really it's kind of like the same. Not maybe not the same because I haven't seen enough of that. But like on the um, series of unfortunate events, it was Neil Patrick Harris playing. Um, Oh, what was the character's name again? Um, Count Olaf. Count Olaf, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't seen the Jim Carrey movie, but the series with Neil Patrick Harris, I love that narration. It's like, I mean, like always, no one knows he's there until like the end. It kind of catches up, and you see, and I, I love that. Like, yeah. I love that, that that type of like goofiness. That show was very goofy, very goofy. But that's like the character that was. Story like that's supposed to be. I mean, the if you've if you've read the book series, the book series is equally mm -hmm. quirky and off the wall and silly, and at times nonsensical. Um, <laughs> so I think Neil Patrick Harris um, great. was the is was the perfect person to pull that off. And I haven't seen Jim Carrey's version, like I said, but I mean, I'm I'm sure it's, it's just a film, so it tells the entire story in that one film, but. Whereas, like the the Neil Patrick Harris series, that was was that two episodes, two, not two episodes, two seasons, or is it three? I can't remember. If it was two or three. I think it was just two. And they told the story of like I don't know how many books it was, or was it like six books or five books or something like that? And but yeah, I like that. And not to get away from anything else, I just thought yeah, that whole narration thing led me into this little rabbit hole of uh, let's talk about Neil Patrick Harris. Like, <laughs> ooh, I haven't seen him in anything bad either. So that I think is bad. Come on, you know, Neil, I know. I was going to say that he, <laughs> he will always be uh, Doogie Hauser MD to me. So that was my first exposure to him, and I guess he kind of fell off—not fell off, but you know, kind of like slowly, kind of went away for a while. And then, how about your mother? That's what drew me into that show. I was like, it has Doogie Hauser, yeah, and the guy that was in that movie that one time, and the girl from American Pie. Like, that was my first thought when I heard of that show. It was like those three people drew me into that show. And then Bob Saget voicing it over. I was like, oh, wow, it's Bob Saget. Um, but that's another great show. But I realized that we have talked all this time, and I never put up a single little Twitter thingy. I know. Anything. Well, let's, so, let's, let's put that up there right now. I'll go ahead. Since I mentioned Mark Guggenheim earlier, and I always do this anyway, you can follow Mark Guggenheim. He's you know the sponsor of this show. He's He's – pretty cool and they're they're getting ready to film i think and mark asked mark he said you know it may be delayed because like sometimes first first run plans don't always go exactly the way you want them to right but as it was slated it, uh they're supposed to begin filming in june for the first couple episodes so that might not happen right away but we're looking forward to that and he he said a long time ago, and more recently, he said he definitely will come back on and talk about that when it's time to come out. That's and great. You can follow us uh, at Pod in Hard Place 
at CJ Kirk1979 and at Stephen Colton, 4545452226. Um, I'll always love that. I'll always love that Twitter handle. I don't know why. I just love random numbers. <laughs> um, and I, while I, while I've got the lists up here. Go ahead and throw out Northwood Pie. And yeah. Because um, those guys, they've helped me out a lot reading the script and they talked to me for like two and a half hours about it. And they just, everything I post about, not everything, but 90% of the things I post, somehow they end up liking it or being in it somehow. And so they're really cool. And I always got to throw them some appreciation. And then I'm going to throw this one up too. Yeah. Because this guy is awesome. He, you know, is, a, is that a one? Is that, is the one supposed to be there? I think so. Okay, good. Because I'm like, did I copy it wrong? <laughs> um, but yeah, we're trying to get him on here. So, you know, I'm surprised that he kind of engaged as much as he did that day. We won't go too far into it because nothing's like definite yet. But, but we're I'm gonna- excited. You know what we 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 have learned the power of speaking things into existence, right? Mm-hmm. And um, again, you know, Jordan, we we love you on Superman and Lois. We'd love to speak with all of the members of the cast, but um, you are definitely the, the the first person that we'd really enjoy to, to speak with. And uh, if you're watching or if you hear about this, again, we'd love to have you on. Right, so that again, I mean. Screenshot that, pause it. Whatever well, you can't pause it live, but if you're watching it back later, pause it, write that down. Whatever you got to do, go follow him. And while you're at it, go ahead and turn around to his partner in that episode who provided half of the emotional content that we saw. That was so wonderful. Um, th- both of them, both of them are amazing. I mean, that show would not be the same without the two least special characters. I mean, not the least. I guess maybe Lana is less important than Lois is. But, you know, um, and it's nice to have a Lana that I don't hate. Right. I mean, well, at Smallville, I did not hate Kristen Crook's um, Lana. I kind of liked her. But after about the third season, it's the Lana show. And it was just like, I mean, when she, the episode where she was in a sorority and got possessed by an evil vampire witch, whose name is Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I really started to go, okay, no more Lana. Right. Please. And then Lois Lane comes in around maybe season four or five, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, bye, Lana. You can you can leave now. We don't need you anymore. Um, I still love her as a as a, as a like an actor as a character, uh, but didn't really need her by that point. Halfway through the series, that they had to had to shove her in there like another couple of years until she got her own superpowers and left, which was weird but whatever um i think that's all the twitters that we have to follow or not to follow, I think so, but too. follow. so i i want to just make sure that you are aware of this um you know that um uh, on tuesday i'm flying out with my family to ohio mm-hmm. and um so it kind of begins our our big whirlwind family vacation awesome. um so ohio new york uh, Pennsylvania, and then down to D.C. So that's where we'll be uh, the next three weeks. Okay, cool. So I, 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 I think the concern that I've got is I don't know how much uh, access that I'm going to have to Wi-Fi right. during that time. I may have it. I may not have it. And I'll be, I'll be most likely running off of my, my cell phone. It would be funny if... So, uh... If Jordan comes back like in a week from now or a week from after you're gone, you're like halfway through your trip. He's like, okay, guys, I can come on right now. It's the only day I can do it. Right. I don't want to curse this, but like it'd just be kind of one of those like ironic kind of things where one of those things where I'm like, can you just do it in like a month from now? We'll push it because like I don't I don't want to do these. I mean, I I don't I I could do them alone if I had to, but it's almost like I don't want to rob anybody of the experience of like. Let's talk to this guy or right. whoever. And we got to get, you know, so many people. And plus, it's harder to carry, I think, an interview or a discussion with such a huge name alone, no matter who you are. Right. You know, so like looking at Conan O'Brien, for instance, I've watched a lot of his clips lately from back in the 90s, and he had Andy Richter to kind of play off of. And all these, you know, uh, Jay Leno had Kevin Eubanks, and all these people had their little 
little sidekick guys that kind of like lifted the pressure off of them. So I think I think that would be good if you can't get into it and you can't you know be on. Then I could do something a little bit different, or we could just take a short break. We could this could be our I don't want to say writer strike, but I don't know why I said that. But um, like our off season or something. Uh, the or? the hi- the hiatus. Yeah, um, this is our mid season break or something. Let me let me see what I can do. Okay. Let me see what I can do. It just kind of depends upon where we are at the time. Uh, certainly, if if we're traveling, then it's going to be hard to be in a place where um, where I can be a part of it. But if yes. I'm if I'm in <laughs> if I'm if I'm in one place um, with Wi-Fi, then I could I could definitely join in on my cell phone. And I was hoping that. With the job I had, I could save, and because the, the job I had was literally next door to an airport, I was going to try to save, and we had talked about trying to meet up in person. Right. And wouldn't it have been cool to do one of these live in the same room? That would have been amazing. Or in front of, like, something, I don't know, a statue or, like, a fountain or whatever it may be. Look, we're here. It's between a pot, of, between a pot and a hard place, live from the Washington Monument in, in D.C., and we're here to talk. That would have been a huge, right? But I mean, now that things went the way they did, I don't think that's going to be possible because buying a flight a ticket, buying a flight. Do you buy a flight? Buy a ticket? I never really know how to word that. Like, buy a ticket, get a flight. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I probably could have done that uh, back then, but now it's like. Maybe doable, but I I really doubt it at this point, especially after after having been off for like a month. But one day we can make it happen because if I yeah. get to a position and I can get back into say that job again or a job, because I think people now are starting to say, look, we're gonna pay more people more money, and it's starting to like trickle a little bit to where everybody's like, okay, especially I think our our state is gonna end this extended uh, unemployment allowance benefit thing where it's like they're paying you more money to not work. Um, they're going to put an end to that. Cause several people for, for over a year have been making up to six or more hundred dollars uh, a week. Yeah. Just to do nothing. And that would have been glorious. I could have been, you know, doing the same things I've been doing, but getting paid for it. Um, I've seen, I've seen a lot more help wanted signs mm-hmm. around here. And, uh, and my guess is that, um, that as things open up more and those relief funds uh, run out, mm-hmm. I think we're going to see more people will be kind of pressured back into the workforce. And I think a lot of businesses are going to start being a little pressured to pay more. Yeah. Because at the cost of – there's going to be those people who have – you know, like their, their extra benefits are going to dry up, like you said, and then they're going to be forced. But then there's going to be some of those people that have so much saved from all the not working – that they can just still continue not to work for a while. And these businesses are going to be, because it's already here. It's like you hear businesses on the news talking about, we can't find anybody to work here. Even now, after like these benefits are let, letting up, you would think there'd be a huge influx of, of jobs. But right. I think that they said that the people applying for jobs had only gone up about maybe 6% or something after the announcement of these, of these funds being dried up. Anyway, long story short, one day I can get up and I would love to go out to like actually go to LA or something or New York city, or maybe I know you're not in New York city. I'm just saying like one day go to one of these big, huge places and LA would be a little bit more realistic. Because yeah. It's not too much farther. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would be cool and do like a, an episode of this live from a famous place in LA. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know the places, so I'm like, I don't know what's famous or like around, not famous necessarily, but a well-known area at least. Um, well, like uh, we could go down to the, we could do an episode down at the beach. Yeah, that would or be like, a fun place to do it. Yeah, or like live hanging down from the D on the Hollywood sign, and like yeah. have us just like hanging down by like a um, harness, and then uh, we have GoPros attached to us to do it. I mean, I don't think I would be doing that, but it would be interesting. But I think I a mean, beach episode would be another yeah. probably more realistic. I thing. mean, you, you realize that there's there's so I mean there's just so many things in LA 
Yeah. Um, you know, you could go to Burbank, um, to the Warner Brothers, Universal Studios, oh, um, lot area. Um, you can go to um, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Um, yeah. yeah, there's just there's just so many options. So here's what I'll tell you is if you fly out this way, um, you won't have to worry about where you'll stay. You can definitely stay here. Um, so that's one awesome. thing you can check off your list. So that was that was one of the concerns why of going to like DC or any of those areas. I thought like DC was the closest of those areas. Right. To me, um, even though it's hours and hours away, um, but it's closer. Um, I think a flight would have been less going there than say LA or, or New York or whatever, even though New York and, and DC aren't too huge of a stretch away, but I don't know. I guess it didn't happen. And I've always been wanting to get a plane to anywhere. Yeah, because I've never actually taken a real flight or a oh, really? flight on an airline or anything. Yeah. Oh wow. I rented a helicopter for like ten minutes when I was a kid, but that's about it. And yeah, so I've always wanted to go on a flight, and I was gonna try to get it when it was like super, super cheap. But I didn't have the money even then. It's like fly to Japan for twelve dollars or whatever it was, you know, because like, no one was, like, everyone was too afraid to get on a plane, and still some are, but. Uh, Definitely want to try that out, and some of those flights aren't that expensive. I think you can get a decent one out to out to that side of the country in like two or three hundred dollars, yeah, or less. I mean, some depends on when. I would say you know a trip in December probably would be cheaper than say August, but who knows? You know, it would be great, and I can I could stalk Kevin Smith's house and, and find him. You really um, could because he's there, and I don't know exactly where, but I could find him. I kind of know what his house looks like. I could ask around, like, hey, do you know Kevin Smith? Do you know him? And eventually I'll just see him, probably. I'd be like, hey, come on our podcast. Like, no. And then he'll slap me and I'll go home crying. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that's kind of like does it for us tonight. I think All we right. kind of said what we needed to say and got where we needed to go. So join us hopefully in the next week or two or whatever we'll keep everybody updated i guess and uh i might maybe i'll come i might come on here and do some like writing lessons where it, well, nobody wants to take writing lessons from me but because <laughs> you won't like the last it'll take me three years to do a lesson um but you know maybe mo i could do a movie review or something or like some little quick videos because i know i get the urge to do those sometimes where it's like look at this thing that i have now and it like this movie or this dvd is Maybe this will give me a chance to uh, try to watch some. I go through and rewatch an entire season of something and do a review on it. Who knows? There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of stuff out there to talk about about this kind of stuff. So, I'm sure I'll find something to do in case we get to the point where you're not able to join in. Um, yeah, I think I'll definitely I'll, be fine. I'll, yeah, but I'll, I'll keep you posted as far as um, if I'm available or not. So that'll work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep everybody up to date on that. All right, sounds good. Well, hey, I will. I'll let you go. Hope you have a hope you have a great day. All right. Yeah, you too. All right, it's been fun. Yeah, same here. All right, see you.